So as I said earlier, everyone has different paths. And while you are becoming a data engineer, you will also have to find your own path. If you have seen my data engineering journey video, then you will realize that I did not start with the data engineering. I wanted to become something else and I ended up becoming something else. My journey was not straightforward. I was jumping from one thing to something else and trying to figure out what I really wanted to do. And while everyone is making video on how to become something in 2022, I thought of creating my own version of how to become a data engineer or how would I become a data engineer in 2022 if I had to start over. Here's the thing, when you're getting into data engineering, you will see there are a lot of different things you need to learn in order to become a data engineer. If you have checked my roadmap video, then you will realize that there are so many different things I have listed down. And if you Google and check the big data landscape, then you will realize there are so many different tools available in the market but you don't have to learn each and every tool available in the market. So when you're getting started with the data engineering, it looks scary from the outside, but you don't really have to learn each and every tool available in the market. You can't even predict what type of work you will be doing as a data engineer when you get a job or an internship. You might work on some analytical or dashboard thing, you might work on infrastructure related project or building ETL pipeline or you might work on some streaming related project or migration related project. So you can't really know what you will be doing when you get a job or an internship. So your work completely depends on the company that you are working in and it depends on the company problem that you are trying to solve. And this is the reason people generally get confused because they see a lot of different tools available in the market and they try to learn those tools in one go and end up doing literally nothing. As I said, you don't really have to learn each and every thing available in the market you just have to get started with the basic fundamentals remember this everyone has different journey and i talked to a lot of my friends who are data engineers and they had completely different journey than mine what you need to do you need to keep your mindset open to learn whatever comes to your way there are a few fundamental technologies that are common across different data domains such as data analyst data science machine learning data engineering and etc so you just have to work on those fundamentals first in order to learn all the other tools that are available in the market. So I will give you the detailed explanation of why you need to learn those fundamentals. So stick with me with this video and watch this video till the end. Number one on the list is learning programming language. Now you might know that there are a lot of different programming language available in the market, but mainly as a data engineer, you will be working on these three programming language, Java, Scala, and Python. Now, if you know any of the programming language, then you are good to go. You just have to understand the basic fundamentals of programming language. The simple reason to learn this programming language is if you want to write some transformation job, if you want to deploy, validate and test some of the script that you have written, you can do that using programming language. So as I said, you just need to know the basic fundamental of the programming language, such as when to use loops, conditional statements, what are operators, variables and basic understanding of what programming language consists of. But let's say if you don't know any programming language, then you can start with the Python because it is easy to learn. And if you get stuck with some error, then you can easily search that error on Google and you will get a lot of help. I will put down all the resources to learn these things in the description so you can check that out. Second thing on the list is learning structured query language, which is SQL. In my career, I have spent most of my time writing SQL queries. So the reason is simple. All the company data gets stored in databases. Let's take the example of e-commerce company. So all the customers, orders, shipping, supplier information will get stored in database. Now SQL is the way you communicate with the database. You write some query to select data, insert data, update data, and all the other different operations that you can do using SQL. So if you're working on analytical side of data engineering domain, then you have to learn SQL. This is the must have skill if you are working as a data engineer. So learn basics of SQL such as how to update, insert, select and delete data such as learning DDL, DML and DCL statement. Learn about windowing function and all the basic operations that you can do using SQL. I have listed down everything in my data engineering roadmap video so you can check the roadmap video to understand these things in detail. Now while you learn these things, you also need to learn about the basic fundamental of computer science in databases. It's not that you have to remember all these things. But once you understand the basics of computer science fundamentals, then you can easily understand the broader picture of data engineering system. So let's say we have a business. A business might have the application on the website. Now the client comes and interacts with the website or application that generates data. Now those data get stored into databases. Now once we have the data, then we have to use that data to understand what customer wants, how the customer is behaving and all the other information related to customer so that we can improve the business and we can also improve the application and website. What you do, you take that data to analyze it further. So you build a data warehouse around it to analyze these data into detail. So once you have your data into data warehouse, then you can build some metrics, visualization to understand how business is performing. And based on that, you can take some decisions to improve the business lifecycle 
and get profitable value. So understanding the broader picture of the system is really important and this will happen when you understand the basic fundamental of computer science such as understanding the basics of networking, how OSI model works, how the VPN connection works, understanding how API interacts with each other, version control system, understanding the basics of Linux commands because you will be working with a lot of virtual machines. These things will help you to understand these systems in detail. I will put down list of these things in the description so you can check that out. The reason I'm telling you to learn all these things is that it will help you to understand all these technological fundamentals concept in detail. Once you have your fundamental clears, then no matter which tool you work in, you will always have understanding what is happening behind the scene. Also, while you are learning the computer science fundamentals, also work on the database fundamentals such as understanding how to build data models, understanding asset properties, difference between OLAP and OLTP and all the other things. If you want to learn all these things in detail and I have some tutorial series on my channel then you can check that out. Now once you learn all these things and understand the basic fundamentals of computer science, learn the programming language fundamentals, SQL and all the other things, then try to do some portfolio project that you can showcase in your resume. So try to go online, find some data set and start working on that. The problem is pretty simple. You take some database, okay, you build a data model of that particular data set. Then try to upload that data onto the databases, do some transformation on top of it. Try to find some insights and build your project around it. I also have the project series on my channel. So you can check that out to do your portfolio project or get some idea how to do a data engineering project from the start. Now these things are enough to get you into or a job at any company so if you learn these things and if you have some basic portfolio then you can apply for jobs or an internship on LinkedIn, AngelList, Internshala, Glassdoor there are a lot of websites available that you can research on it and try to apply for the jobs or an internship or if you have the specific company that you want to work for then you can go to company's career page and apply there but let's say if you're not able to get the job even after doing all these things then what to do then you can go and learn about the cloud platform the reason is simple, most of the companies are looking for the people who know and understand the cloud computing or the cloud platforms. Data engineering is basically working with a large amount of data that requires a lot of processing power and you can do all these things on cloud computing platform. Now if you don't know about any cloud computing then you can start with the AWS because it has the highest market segment but let's say if you know one cloud then you don't have to learn all the cloud available in the market. Once you know and understand the basics of cloud computing services such as IAM, VPC, the basics of storage, how to spin up the virtual machines and all the other things, then you don't really have to learn each and every cloud available in the market. So you can get started with the cloud easily. There are a lot of different courses available on Udemy, Coursera or YouTube. So you just have to search about that cloud platform and you will get a lot of different videos available on that topic. I also have the project series on cloud computing so you can check that out. So as I said earlier, everyone has different paths and while you're becoming a data engineer, you will also have to find your own path. Once you learn the basics fundamentals, then your job or an internship will determine different things such as let's say if you're working on AWS just to learn those things. But if you get a job or an internship, you might work on something else. You might work on Google Cloud Platform or you might work on some open source tool or you might work on some enterprise level tool. You can't really predict what is coming to your way. It is your journey and it is your job to find your own path. Now one concern you might have is that companies asking for latest tools available in the market such as Airflow, Snowflakes and all the other things. Now the thing is for the beginner or the entry level position, company don't really expect you to know all these things. But let's say they have written that you should know or you must know these skills. So you can connect with the people working in that company and ask them that what type of projects they work on, what type of technology stack they work on in day to day basis. So once you understand the day to day work and if you see that they are using let's say Airflow on day to day basis then you can go online and learn about Airflow and add it in your resume or do some projects around it and try to apply for that particular company. So it is basically understanding what the company expect you to know and trying to learn that particular thing in order to get the internship or a job. Now if you don't know how to get a job in data domain then I also have the detailed video on that particular topic so you can check that out. I will also recommend some of the videos in the description so you can check that out to understand these things in detail. I have created the detailed videos on data engineering domain so I will put down everything in the description so go check that out and try to utilize all those information for your career. Now this was completely based on my point of view and my experiences in data engineering domain. 
Now everyone has different journey as I told you earlier. Now if you want some different point of view then you can check the Seattle Data Guys video on how to become a data engineer in 2022. You will get some different ideas. Now what you can do you can pick some of the things from my video. You can pick some of the things from his video. Try to blend it together and make your own version out of it and try to get started your career into data engineering. So if you found this video helpful then don't forget to hit that like button and if you are new here then don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next video.